which is a microcontroller configured to run as a basic microcomputer, a little bit like the computers from the 80s. Specifically today, we're going to look into connecting it to a PC through the serial port, which is something that we didn't manage to do the last time, and then we'll look at some of the other features that it offers. This is the USB to serial cable that we saw last video that I couldn't get to work because the, both this connector and the CB2 connectors were male. But fortunately, I just got an adapter and it's a you know, female female. So we can plug this in here and convert it over to a female connector. And this should plug straight into the CB2. The reason this is covered in electrical tape is that I actually opened it up to make sure that there was nothing weird going on. Um, I'm not going to show it here just because there were some pieces inside and I don't, don't want to follow them over, but it's a completely straightforward connection. The only weird thing is that if you look at it, so this side is the one with five holes and this one is the side with four holes. But if you flip it over, this is four and that's five. That's why I was really confused. So I opened it up and it turns out that, yeah, they're actually connecting the ones in this row with a metal piece that goes down and then connects to the bottom row. So they're all connected as they should. Um, so this is not a null modem connection. This is just a regular connection. So we should be able to connect the PC to the CB2 now. First thing we need to do is put some jumpers right there so we can select whether we're going to use a regular serial connection cable or a null modem one. So they're hard to read as usual, but um, it looks like null modem would be connecting those two and regular cable would be connecting the next two. Let's go ahead and put some pins in there so we can put a jumper in the correct location. This particular cable came with a driver. So that's really handy. That way I install that and Windows can recognize it as a serial port. And there it is. It shows up as USB to serial COM3 port. Okay, let's plug it in in the serial port. And here we are ready to test it. For this, I'm going to use the old hyper terminal program. There are better terminal programs out there, but this particular one was recommended in the CB2 page. So I figured we might as well start there. So we need to configure it for 2400 baud, no parity, two stop bits, and no flow control. I need to make sure that on the CB2 side, it's configured correctly. So yeah, 2400 baud, and we want the simple serial in and out. We'll see later what it means. And we are ready to test it through the CB terminal. Now I'm typing some keys on the computer and yeah, that's not looking good at all. Just in case, I'm going to switch modes so I can see what I'm typing. And now I'm typing on the CB2 and yeah, it just comes out as weird characters and same thing if I type on the computer. So something isn't right. So when this happened, I actually went ahead and I checked all the connections related to the transmit and receive pins and connectors on the board and everything seemed to be fine. I also double checked the adapter and again, it checked out. Then I reached out to Koss, the person in charge of the project, and he suggested that I look into the voltages generated by my USB to serial adapter. And that is when I learned the difference between RS-232 and UART. Ever since the days of the early PCs, I used to refer to serial cables as RS-232. I always assumed that it had to do with the shape of the port, but that was only part of it. First of all, RS-232 stands for Recommended Standard. How about that? I had no idea. In particular, the standard says that receive and transmit are sent over two different lines and that there are two voltage levels. The negative voltage is usually minus 3 to minus 15 and positive voltage is anywhere from plus 3 to plus 15 and that in the idle state will hold the negative voltage but also a logical 1 is actually a negative voltage and a logical 0 is a positive voltage. And then we have the UART, which stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. 
UART is more of a hardware piece rather than a standard, which takes care of serializing and reassembling data to communicate serially. UART doesn't define specific voltage levels, but it definitely defines idle as high, but then a logical zero is low voltage, so usually it's zero volts, and a logical one is high voltage or five volts. Unfortunately, I wasn't the only one who wasn't totally clear on this distinction. So whenever you get a device that claimed to be RS-232, you really need to check if they mean the connector shape or the voltage levels it produces. I suspect that might be our problem, so let's measure them. Okay, so here we have the CB2 wired up so that the oscilloscope is looking at the transmission pin on the serial connector, and then it's grounded on the ground pin, so pin number five of the serial connector. And initially what we're seeing is that the default voltage is actually really low. So this is at each square is two volts. So this is minus two minus four. That's like minus five volts, which is exactly what you expect out of the RS-232 standard. And now uh, if I press a key is going to send the code for that key um, serialized. And there we go, we get something like that. And notice it jumps way up to again plus five so yeah it has a it has a, a total of 10 volt differential that's that's what the rs232 um, expects so yeah this is behaving exactly the way you would expect but the atmega microcontroller doesn't interface directly with rs232 signals instead it has some added circuitry to invert the signal and bring it down to a zero to five volt range Okay, so now in addition to looking at the transmission line on the serial port, we're looking at the transmission, a TX1 pin on the microcontroller itself. There we should see the same serial pattern, but before the amplification. So the first interesting thing is that it looks like the default voltage is five. So when there's no activity, it's five volts. And when we send something, there you go. We see the same kind of pattern, just reversed and going down to zero volts. So it's quite different from what comes out of the RS-232 as far as voltages. And now for the other half of the test, which is we have the computer with the 